Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at defining a site root folder in Dreamweaver CS4. Now this was one of the tutorials from the May-June 2009 tutvid.com newsletter. If you haven't checked out the newsletter, I strongly urge you do. Uh, that is tutvid.com slash newsletter. If you had signed up with the newsletter, you've already seen this tutorial. You've already read through it. You've probably already done it, uh, as many, many others already have. But for those of you that haven't signed up with the newsletter, here I am. Uh, nearly a month later, I'm going to share uh, the tutorial goodness with you as well. So why, dis why define this site root folder in Dreamweaver? Well, basically, it's going to give your Dreamweaver project some sense of organization. It's going to allow you to organize everything and allow Dreamweaver to help you organize everything. And there are actually some things in Dreamweaver that you need to have a site defined in order to do. So you really, really want to do that. And then once you've created your site, you can just take that whole root folder, that package you've already set up on your hard drive locally. That's why they use the term local root folder. It's on your machine, not on some web server. And send the whole thing up to the web, and voila, you should have a great website. So with all of that in mind, let's take a look at how we can define this local root folder. Before I even get into Dreamweaver, I actually like to attack my hard drive, and by attack, I mean in a good way. I mean jump into my hard drive and prepare where my client's files are about to go. Begin organizing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mock this up on my desktop. I'm going to uh, reduce here to my desktop. I'm going to right-click and just hit uh, New and New Folder. And we're going to call this Filio. Uh, it's just a fictitious company name I just made up. So now that we've created this folder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click inside of this folder and try to avoid knocking anything else off my desk. And I'm going to double click inside of this folder and what I'm going to do as Dreamweaver pops back up, I'm going to uh, right click and hit new folder. And we're just going to create a folder called assets and right click and hit new again and call this folder site. Now this site is going to be the local root folder. Dreamweaver is going to store everything in that site. Assets is like where we're going to put the PSD uh, for our site layout. Uh, assets is where images and files for the client are going to go. Uh, let's say you have information about the client. You want to put all that in the assets folder. None of that is going to get anywhere near the web. That's all just going to be the stuff that we're going to be looking at as we're building the website and saying, hey, I need this image. I'll bring it over to the site folder and I'll use it here. All right, so now that we have this setup, I'm going to close this and we are about ready to go into Dreamweaver. But before we actually jump into Dreamweaver, we want to create a couple more folders. I actually should have closed that folder. Uh, we're going to come inside of the site folder and I'm going to right click and hit new folder. We're going to name this folder CSS because I know we're going to have some CSS files on the site. Uh, right click new folder and I'm going to say images because again I know we're going to have images in the site. If you know you're going to have video or audio and video, maybe you want to create a folder called media. If you know you're going to have uh, PHP or a lot of PHP, you might want to create a folder just for PHP. If you know you're going to have, whatever you know you're going to have, you should probably just go in and create a folder for it. Now you can do all this in Dreamweaver. I just prefer to do it and then plug Dreamweaver into it because it's kind of cool seeing Dreamweaver go out and grab all the folders and set them up for you. But, you know, it's not, you don't have to do it this way. This is just the way I prefer doing it. I think it's going to help you understand what exactly this local root folder phenomenon is. So now let's hop here into Dreamweaver and take a look at uh, setting up this uh, site. I'm going to cancel out of this. I just put that up there for show. I'm going to come up here to site and choose new site. Now, creating a new site again, it's just going out to your hard drive and finding a folder. Now, typically you're going to see the basic tab. The basic tab is for wimps. You don't want to use it. It's nowhere near as powerful. Uh, and I used it once or twice. I started using the advanced tab and I never looked back. You're going to be fine using the advanced tab. It's, I don't, you know, they call it advanced. They should really call it the more info tab because it just gives you more info. Really, the only two things you need are a site name and where you want that local root folder to reside. So I'm going to go ahead and give this site a name of Filio. Now the site name is just for your reference. I can't emphasize this enough. And anywhere else you look, everyone's going to really strongly emphasize this. The site name, nobody ever sees it. Nobody except you and or anybody that would be using your computer. The client will never see this site. So you could call this, you know, the worst client in the world or, you know, the last website I'm ever doing for this guy. You know, stuff like that if you want. He'll never see it. And after that, we're going to choose local root folder. Click on that little folder icon, hit desktop. There's the Filio file. Double click on that. Site, great. Now in here, you can see there's our CSS and images folders, great. Just hit select 
and then default images folder, well, we can just double click on images and choose select. Now, if you're on the Mac, I believe all you do is select the folder and then hit the button that says choose. If I recall uh, correctly, that is what you do. PC, you actually have to go into the folder and hit select. Great, now that we've done that, uh, we're, all, we're gonna leave the links relative to the document and all the rest of the stuff we're gonna leave default. All right, You don't need to worry about any of that. Don't complicate yourself trying to you know, wrap your mind around everything. And all the rest of these categories, you can leave them blank for now. You don't need to do anything in them. Hit OK. Now when you hit OK, the Files panel pops up and you will see here in Dreamweaver, we have our site, which I can see is sitting on my desktop. And I have two folders inside of it, CSS and Images. Now there's nothing in these folders. Okay, no problem, we just created them. But we have just created a site in Dreamweaver and Dreamweaver is waiting for us to add HTML pages and images and it will begin automatically managing them. And like say if we link two different pages and we drag those pages around into different folders, Dreamweaver is always gonna keep them linked. So we're not gonna have to worry about going and relinking hundreds and hundreds of pages. Really, really great. Two quick things I just wanna throw out there to you guys before I let you go. Number one, if you wanna create a new uh, page, well, just right click new file and it gives you a new .html page, but it doesn't have to be .html, it can be uh, index.php, it can be index.htm, HTML, uh, it can be anything, you can even create a CSS file. Now, one cool thing here, say index.html, bam, I've just created a home page. And if you've never done web design before, Whenever a, a browser goes to your domain or connects to your web server, it's looking for the index.php or index.html or index.whatever file right there on that, you know, that top level, that top directory. So you name your, you always name your homepage index.html for those of you that uh, didn't know about that. And also, I like to use a form of naming my files and I try to stay uh, consistent when I name anything, my file names on my computer files, I upload to the web, everything, everything, everything. Some of my older files, uh, you've probably seen, uh, if you've seen any of the file names, they aren't always as consistent, but nowadays I pretty much always do it, and it's called camel case. It's basically where your first word, let's say I wanna name this index, the first word is lowercase. Every word thereafter is just uppercase. So no underscores, and that's just the way I do it. So I could say index the second one dot HTML. And you can see that the way my file's named is index is lowercase, and then the second and one all are uppercase. It's just a good idea to get some sort of system for naming your files down in your head so you can always keep track of what exactly it is you're doing, where you're moving stuff, and things like that. It's just a very, very good way to uh, stay organized despite or along with all of the organization tools Dreamweaver has to offer as well. So that's it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you'll learn something. And uh, I hope you'll go check out the site. It's www.tutvid.com. And hey, while you're there, tutvid.com slash newsletter, or there is a newsletter sign-up form right on the homepage. All I need is your name and email address. Really super easy. It takes five seconds, if that, and you're in. You get these nice newsletters. Uh, it's actually twice a month, but once a month for the newsletter with all the tutorials. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed it. And once again, thanks for watching.